Hi, my name is Daniel Beistet. In this tutorial, we will have a look at Retopoflow 3.1.0, which is a Blender add-on for retopologizing in Blender. Once you have installed the add-on and activated it, you can find it up here. I'm going to create a new mesh by pressing my high resolution mesh and then press new target at active. Once free top of flow starts, it shows this welcome screen where you can also access the online documentation. The documentation is always accessible down here. And uh, one really helpful thing is the active tool help, which is also accessible through the F2 button. So it shows information and hotkeys about your current tool selected in the left panel over here. On the right panel, you have uh, various settings for your current tool and some global settings regarding symmetry and target cleaning, display and such. This is not something I will go into detail, but you can read about it in the documentation. In order to change tool when using Retopoflow, you can use the toolbar on the left side of the screen or bring up the radial menu with a Q on your keyboard. The contours tool is really useful for retopologizing tube-like elements on your mesh, things like arms or fingers or uh, legs or tails. So if I hold down control, and drag a line like this, I'll get a tube. However, I don't want to have only six spans on my cube. So if I want to check how to change that, I can press uh, documentation on active tool or F2 on my keyboard. So here it says like uh, press shift plus up uh, in order to increase segment count or shift uh, down or you can use the mouse scroll wheel as well, but I'm using a Wacom, so it's handy to use the keyboard. Okay, I'm gonna add some new cuts like this, and you can even add cuts on existing geometry as well. Now, if I deselect and create a new cut like this. Let's make sure it's 12. Right. So now I know that this and uh, these two edge loops both have 12 spans, 12 edges, and I can bridge those with F on my keyboard. So here it looks a little twisted. And if I have an edge loop selected, I can press R in order to twist that edge loop. So I'm gonna do that for these, I think, oops. Yeah. Now, if I press Shift R, it will instead uh, rotate like this or R, R. I can also um, move my loop with G. The tool poly strips will let you lay down a stroke and fill it with poly strips. When it is selected, you can still deform it by dragging these handles around, just pressing G or R. Now, if you want a smaller radius, you can just lower your brush scale with F or make it bigger. Poly strips is really interesting in the sense that you can easily merge things like this. Just paint by holding down control. You can also mark a selection and uh, deform it or increase or decrease bounce with shift up and down or using the scroll wheel on the mouse. 
Strokes is really handy when you need more precision control. Here I can paint an outline, change the amount of span, shift up and down, paint the second line, and here I can decide if I how many spans I want. Strokes can do longer extrusions based on selection or bridge two different selections. It can also do things like this. Patches can create some really nice fills on your geometry. You just need to make sure that this side and this side matches up in the same amount of edges. So here, for instance, I can deselect these two and now I get a nice patch, which I can uh, fill with F after seeing this preview. Good. Now let's try this one. So here I need to use shift and select some extra. And if these uh, corner vertices are off for some reason, I can toggle those by clicking control, shift and toggle the vertex corner. And then finally fill with F on the keyboard. The polypen tool can be found here on the radial Q menu. It creates new polygons like this and it always bases the new uh, polygon on your current selection so you can see that these uh, two edges are selected then I can create new polygons like this so it first starts with a new triangle and then if I, a, if I create a new vertex on top of that it becomes a, a, a quad you can also, if I don't have anything selected, so I can deselect everything with A, like this. And if I have auto merge on, which is enabled by default, I can just move this vertex over here and it will merge. So you can see here that this border edge, all of the border edges are red and the uh, merged vertices are connected with a white edge. So that's a telltale that your, um, uh, like, uh, your vertices are connected. So you can see, for instance, here that these two aren't connected. But if I move them close enough, they're going to auto-merge. So we also have uh, quad only and um, this creates polygons like this, which is really fast and fluid. Makes it really easy to create new geometry. You can also change the value here uh, on a sub radial menu, which is Shift Q. So you can go to triquad, quad only, or uh, in more rare cases, might want to have edge only for some reason. So now it just creates edges without filling in a polygon or you can select just triangles like this. But mostly you will work with quad only or tri quad. That's it. If you need to cut into your mesh and create new edges, you can do so with the knife tool. Hold down control and start cut into your mesh. You can even cut into a polygon face and create a vertex in the middle of that face. Existing vertices will be marked blue and uh, new vertices that will be created after your cut will be previewed as green points. You can also access the knife tool from another uh, tool. So if I'm in polypen, for instance, I can quickly switch to the knife tool by pressing K. And now I'm cutting. Pressing enter will switch back to the polypen tool. The loop tool can slide loops around your mesh and it can also add new loops if you hold down control and click. If you are using another tool, like the polypen tool in this case, 
you can uh, temporarily switch over to the loop tools by using the shortcut control R, then add a loop, and now you're back in the polypen tool again. Where Top of Flow comes with two brushes, Tweak and Relax. Tweak will move vertices and Relax will relax them. There's some settings here as well. You can choose to exclude the boundary or include it so it's not locked anymore. Symmetry is something we'll go over later. Um, here you can uh, choose to exclude or include hidden and uh, select it as well. So for instance, if I um, select only, nothing will happen. But if I select a bunch of these polygons, then go back tweak, it will only tweak my selection. Now there's some really handy shortcuts for activating, activating tweak and relax as well. So if I have polypen as my active tool, for instance, I can switch to tweak mode by holding down the C key on my keyboard. And I can activate relax by holding down Z. C as in Caesar and Z as in zebra. Okay, let's have a look at how you delete geometry. First off, I like to use polypen for selecting geometry. At any time I can deselect my current selection with A on the keyboard. So if I want to delete these faces, for instance, I press X and then faces, now they're gone. Let's have a look at how you delete edges. First, we're gonna select a bunch of edges here then press X and dissolve edges. Now delete edges will delete the edges but keep the faces and that's not usually what you want. Furthermore, the top of flow notices what you're hovering above. So if you start hovering above a face and start selecting, it will select the faces. If you start hovering an edge, it will select the edge. And if you hover a vertex, you guessed it, it's going to select vertices. As you're getting used to working with Retopa Flow, you're probably going to want to increase your speed. And one way of doing that is using uh, the radial menu for deleting edges and stuff. You open up the radial menu with the control X, and then you can choose whatever you want to dissolve or delete. So that goes a bit faster than just hitting X and choosing something here. Retopo Flow allows you to visualize symmetry as well. If you press the X axis in the options, you can see a mirrored version of your geometry. At any time, you can transform your selection. G for grab, R for rotate, and S for scale. If you have edited your geometry outside of Retopa Flow, you might end up with some unwanted gaps. You can fix this by going into the options, target cleaning, and then snap vertices. It also has some settings for merging vertices by distance and flipping normals. Whenever you want to exit Retopa Flow, you can either go to the exit button here or press tab and quit. Your mesh will still be there. And if you want to continue edit that mesh, just go into edit mode, press this button and you're inside again. Now, if you want to set up a new geometry, for instance, uh, create some other topology for the arms, you could just select this and create a new target at active. And now you can start creating a new mesh. A really important note before you start retopologizing your character is to make sure that your um, 
high resolution mesh is not containing a huge amount of polygons. The reason for reducing your high resolution mesh is to make sure that Retopoflow runs smoothly and is not like bogged down by millions of polygons. So in order to decimate it before, I'm just gonna show you, just to, uh, duplicate here and show wireframe. Select the mesh, add a decimate modifier and reduce it by how much it takes to get it down to a lower subdivision level. So now I'm down to 200,000, that's okay. So we can press this button and apply the modifier or just hover and press Control A and that's it.